Hello guys, this once again back from your favorite and my favorite Hearts the Exclusive channel. And a very warm good morning to all of you. Good morning. Today we are going to have the second session of our Aspiration series which we have launched yesterday for the Sweet 2022 batch. And now what we are going to do is to have the NCRT highlight series marking the NCRT for the chapter Living World. Clear? So I have, yesterday I have discussed the very base of this chapter and now and one or two one two, two slides of this NCRT. Okay. And anyway, now we are gonna do once again marking those highlight or highlighting those points, important points of NCRT. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, from this page you have nothing to learn. Okay, living world is a uh, wonderful. The point is that, uh, but also new one using nothing, nothing from this page. From this page, nothing. Next page. Uh, yeah, what is living? All living organisms grow. It's one of the important features. Before that, there are certain characteristics to show that all living organisms, uh, what all organisms are living, or whether certain organisms are living, there are certain characteristics that implies whether the organisms are living or not such as growth, reproduction, ability to sense environment and mount a suitable response, metabolism, ability to self-replicate, self-organize, interact. All these are certain characteristics that organisms have in order to what, prove that whether they are living or non-living. Next point is that all living organisms grow. What is growth? Growth is the increase in mass and increase in number of individuals are the twin characteristic of growth. Okay, for your board examination, one question is there from this session or from this section. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 let me check in. What distinctive characteristic? One more question. One more question. Here listen it properly. Okay. What distinctive characteristics are exhibited by living beings? Distinctive characteristic growth, reproduction, um, and what ability to sense environment and mount a response. It's here. Ability to sense environment and mount the response, metabolism, ability to self replicate, all these are distinctive characteristics exhibited by living beings. Another question, another one more question is define growth. Growth is the increase in mass and body, uh, increase in number, uh, number, uh, number of individuals, increase in number of cells or mass of a living matter is called growth. Okay, the next slide we will come across it. Another question How, uh, how do growth? Of non living object differ from that of living object. Non living object growth, how do they differ from that of living object? Okay. Uh, how when some tissues, loss of anyone can invert for some living Non living objects, if it also grow. Okay, non living object. So we said that growth is a characteristic to determine whether the organism is living or not okay so now we said that if living organism if organism grow we can say that it's living but in case of non-living things they also grow as the main criterion is increase in body mass mountains boulders and sand mounds do grow this is a kind of growth exhibited by non-living objects is by accumulation of materials on the surface due to weathering and disintegration for example in case of stones they get broken and get accumulated and some form the mound okay oh these are examples after that what you have to learn is that so well, another one more question is that how do growth of non-living object differ from that of 
living beings. Growth of non-living object differ from that of living beings. Clear? Then, define reproduction. Next point. Growth and reproduction in case of higher plants and animals. They are mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive in case of higher plants and animals. Okay. Then, what is reproduction? The production of progeny. The production of progeny possessing progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of parents. Possessing features more or less similar to those of parents is known as what? Reproduction. So, look, listen. Wait, let me move this. You cannot see it in my presentation because I only can see it. Okay. Reproduction is like, uh, likewise, is a characteristic of living organism. Am I right? Okay, fine. In multicellular organism, what is reproduction? Is a one more question. It refers to the production of progeny possessing features more or less similar to those of parents. Okay, so reproduction is of two types. One is sexual reproduction involving two parents, and the second one is asexual reproduction involving a single parent. Okay, then in planaria, budding. Sorry, in hydrates, blood budding. Uh, planaria, it is regeneration. Hydra, it's budding. Amoeba, it's binary fission. Amoeba, it's binary fission. Okay. All these are kinds of reproduction. Okay. Moving further. Another characteristic of life is metabolism. Another characteristic of life. So, in the first point, that is the growth. First point was the growth. So, growth, we said that both living as well as non-living objects grow. Living as well as non-living objects grow. So, we, not, we cannot take, as, take growth as a defining factor, as a defining characteristic of living organism. So, growth cannot be taken as a defining characteristic of living organism. Okay. Next is reproduction. Both uh, ability of self-replicating is known as what? Reproduction. It cannot be an inclusive defining characteristic. Look, Hence, reproduction also cannot be an inclusive because sterile organisms like mules, worker bees, or they all produce the progeny. They are sterile, though they are sterile, they all produce the progenies. Infertile human couples. Okay, all steriles can be produced with progeny, different progeny. So we cannot say reproduction as a defining factor for living living organisms okay another characteristic is metabolism all living organisms are made up of various chemicals these converse conversions are chemical reactions or metabolic reactions so metabolism is a biochemical process some of or some total of all biochemical reactions taking place in our body biochemical reaction taking place in our body is what is said to be metabolism Okay. Okay, what is metabolism? Another one more question. The sum total of all chemical reactions occurring in our body is called as metabolism. No non-living object exhibit metabolism. Therefore, we can say that this metabolism as a defining feature. Defining feature for living organisms. Next one is a cellular organization. All living organisms are made up of cells. Okay, no non-living object. It cannot be said that the organization is very fine. Okay, we, therefore we can say that the cellular organization as a defining feature of 
लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम दैट क्लियर फॉर यू ओके नेक्स्ट आर नेक्स्ट फैक्टर इज द एबिलिटी टू सेंस आर सराउंडिंग्स एंड नॉट अस यूटेबल रिस्पॉन्स the ability of sense that is they are aware of the surroundings we can say that we are aware of the surroundings or our consciousness the term used is consciousness okay so this consciousness only living organisms are aware of themselves okay whether non living organisms are not aware of their surroundings so we can say that it is a defining property of living organism consciousness is the defining property of living organisms when human beings come very sorry when it comes to human beings it's all uh, it is all more diff difficult to define the living state we observation in coma mm, excuse me excuse me story information for the answer so as you learn that biology is a study of living things or living material it's a story of life on earth for example the life originated on the earth in the form of big bang there are many theories explaining this okay adam and eve manu and shraddha in hindus all those things anyway that's not required now next topic is diversity in the living world okay as per iucn iucn international union for conservation of natural resources international union of union for conservation of natural resources they said that in our planet earth there are more than 1.7 to 1.8 million species 1.7 to 1 more than 1.7 to 1.8 million species and the one mark question for your board examination that may be asked for your board examination is the definition of biodiversity what is biodiversity the number and types of organism one second biodiversity the number and types of organism present on the earth is said to be biodiversity is said to be biodiversity okay and only those needed i use the in full form very very important okay nomenclature system of naming is known as what nomenclature okay so what is nomenclature the process of naming of organisms is said to be nomenclature it is a one mark question okay one mark question define nomenclature what is identification another one mark question what is identification identification is to determine the correct place of an organism in a previously established plan previously established plan of classification for that so we told that its nomenclature is a system of naming am i right nomenclature is a system of framing therefore both plants and animals should be named in uh, to have a scientific name in order to avoid confusions and this nomenclature is of two types binomial nomenclature and trinomial nomenclature nomenclature was proposed by nomenclature the idea of nomenclature was proposed by casper bohen casper bohen okay casper bohen and it was established by a scientist known as carl linnaeus okay carl linnaeus okay and this binomial nomenclature was proposed by carl linnaeus and trinomial nomenclature was proposed by a scientist known as lamarck okay and the system of naming for plants is based on the uh, principles and criteria of icbn important icbn international code for botanical nomenclature international code for botanical nomenclature and in case of animals the criterion and uh, the principles are based on icezn international code for zoological nomenclature for example a scientific name pisum sativum 
the certain condition to write it. The first letter of the genus name should be capital, and the second let uh, and the second first letter of the second word should be small. They should be underlined when written. They should be printed in italics, or do not show that these words are Latinized. Okay. And each name component of two, uh, comprise of two components. One is the generic name. This is what is it to be? The generic name. And this is the specific epithet. Specific, specific epithet. Okay. And this system of providing a name with two components is said to be binomial nomenclature. This name uh, system was given by Carolus Linnaeus. So, not Carl Linnaeus. Carl Linnaeus. Okay. That's all. In this line. Uh, the scientific name of mango is Mangifera indica. When printed, it should be in italics, and when handwritten, they should be separately underlined. They should be separately underlined. Okay. Biological names are generally in Latin and written in italics. And they're written in italics. The first word of the biological name represents genus, while the second one is a specific epithet. When handwritten, they should be separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their Latin origin. The first word denoting the genus starts with a capital letter while the specific epithet with a small letter and can be illustrated with the example of Mangifera indica. Okay. So expand the abbreviation IZBN. One, one more question IZBN, International Code for Botanical Nomenclature, IZZ, and International Code for Zoological Nomenclature. Who proposed the system of binomial nomenclature? Carl Linnaeus. Given below is the scientific name of mango. Identify the correct name. Mangifera indica and Mangifera indica. One for exam. And for one question, it is Mangifera indica. And for second question, it is Mangifera indica. The correct one is second one because the second wave. Second word, first letter should be small. Okay. What is classification? Oh, all those we are the upcoming slides. Okay, fine. All these I am discussing. All one mark question. Okay, one mark question. More and more questions are there. If you want, you contact me. Please ask me. My email in the comment section. I will provide you with that. Okay, classification. One second, one second. Name of the order appears after the specific epithet at the end of, for example, Mandifera indica lin. Which indicates that a species was first described by Carl Linnaeus. Classification. Define classification. One more question. Classification is the process of process by which anything is grouped into convenient categories based on some easily observable characters. Okay. Based on some easily observable. Characters market. Okay, after that, what I have to learn is uh, taxonomy. So, what is taxonomy? What is taxonomy? The study of principles and procedures of classification of organism. So on base of what characteristic or what feature is the organism classified. So the study and uh, study of principles and process of classification of organisms is said to be taxonomy. Next one slide. Systematics. Systematics. Mm. What is systematics? The branch of biology which deals with classification of organisms based on their evolutionary relationship is said to be systematic. So systematics and 
taxonomy difference to my question. Okay, so Linnaeus wrote a book, used his book, Systema. Linnaeus used his book. So Linnaeus used this book, Systema Naturae. Systemic Nature as the title of publication. The scope of systematics was later changed to include identification of nomenclature. Systematics takes into account evolutionary relationship between the organisms or differences to my question. Clear? Okay, moving on. Taxonomic categories. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. Okay. What is taxonomic hierarchy? The arrangement of various cat taxonomic categories together in a definite order from higher to lower is what is said to be taxonomic hierarchy. Each rank. Unit of classification, in fact, represents a rank commonly known as taxon. Okay. That's all, that's all. Each rank or taxon. Further. Wait, 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 wait. Requirement. Okay. Species. The lowest category, the fundamental. Fundamental unit of classification is the species. Manchvara indica, here yeah, the indica represents specific epithet. Solanum tuberosum, tuberosum, specific epithet. Sandra leo, leo, specific epithet. All these are represent the specific epithet, while the first word represent genera and represent higher level of category or taxon. Okay. That's all. Genus. Genus comprises of a group of related species, a group of related species which has more than one characteristic. For example, Leo Panthera Leo, where the Panthera generic name, uh, Panthera paradise, Panthera, all these are Solanum tuberosum, Solanum is the generic name. Family. The assemblage of related word genera is known as family. For example, Felidae, family of cats canidae okay all these are respective families next one order order is the uh, group of related group of related uh, what families group of related families okay for example, carnivore includes both felidae and canidae. Okay. Class is a group. This category includes related orders. For example, primata, monkey, gorilla, gib and gibbon. All these class mammalia, all these are respective classes. Next is phylum. Phylum is the next highest uh, higher category. Uh, or based on the common features like the presence of notochord and hollow neural system, including phylum chordata. Kingdom, it is the highest category. Okay. Mm. That's all, that's all. This is the order kingdom, phylum, class, order, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Okay. K, P, Z. Of GS KPC of GS Karina Priyanka call over friends groove salsa Karina Priyanka call over friends groove salsa all or in which of the clue which you need you can study okay this is the order taxonomical aids Various species of plants, animals, and other organisms are used in agriculture diversity. These studies would require correct classification. 
Okay, some of the taxonomical aids are herbarium. What is herbarium? It's a storehouse of collected plant specimen that are dried, preserved, and pressed down sheets. Okay, and this sheet contains specific uh, information such as the name of the collector, date and place of collection, English name, local name, botanical name, and the family of the plant in order to have a future reference. And uh, this question uh, and this herbarium sheet the label of a herbarium sheet does not carry information on height of the plant okay botanical garden these are specialized gardens having collections of living plants for reference okay they are used for identification so this is a kind of botanical gardens are a kind of ex situ conservation ex situ conservation living organisms or that is the living plants are used for conserving famous botanical gardens are at Kew in england indian botanical garden at howrah national botanical research institute at lucknow museum biological museums are generally set up in educational institutes such as schools colleges etc uh, they have a collection of preserved plant and animal specimens for study and reference okay then zoological park these are the places where the wild animals are kept in protected environment under human care and we are able to learn about their habits and behavior children love visiting this common zoological park known as zoo another taxonomical aid is the key key is another taxonomical aid used for identification of plants and animals based on their similarities and dissimilarities the key is based on a pair of contrasting characters, which is known as a couplet. Okay. Each statement in the key is known as a lead. Separate taxonomic keys are required for each taxonomic categories, such as family, genus, species for identification purposes. They are generally analytical in nature. Analytical in nature. Flora manuals, monographs, catalogs. All these are some means of recording descriptions okay they also help in correct identification flora contains the actual amount of habitat and distribution of uh, plants of a given area manuals are useful in providing information for identification of names of species found in an area monographs contain information on any one taxon okay certain notes key is a taxonomical aid is a taxonomical aid uh, based on the contrasting characters called as couplet. E to couplet has two comp comp opposite statements on its leg. Separate keys uh, for each algorithm categories is required used to classify organism. Flora, actual amount of habitat and distribution of the plant species in a given area. Manual, have description of information uh, species in an area used for getting information for identification. Monograph has information of any one taxon used for classification purpose. Okay. And that's all for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our channel. Okay one like one plus share and one subscribe for our channel not forget to comment us in the comment section your valuable comments will help us improve our videos thank you all children we meet it's signing out from hearts the exclusive sample